Hello everybody, this is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. I just felt like coming on today at the beginning of this video just to say hello and just to see um, how everyone is doing. I'd love to hear what you all are doing to keep yourself busy yet active yet staying home as much as possible according to guidelines. I myself, the job I work full time um, at a nonprofit here in West Michigan. I am still going out um, grocery shopping about twice a week for our nonprofit because we are part of what we do is we run a food bank or a food pantry for families in the community. So we are doing very essential work. And actually, since the social distancing started and children staying home from school, um, our work has become even more important. So I'm not saying that to say, oh, look at what I'm doing. I am very blessed to be part of something that is making a difference for the community. But on the other hand, I also struggle a little bit because I am going out into the stores and then coming back home to my family. So um, if you think of it, please pray for me for protection as I am out shopping. Um, I am taking all the precautions with hand sanitizer and washing hands and using gloves and staying away from other people. Um, but anyway, I would appreciate that. So if you are new to my channel, like I said, my name is Cindy. My channel is called Monarch Mom DIY. Most of the videos I post on my channel are home decor DIY videos using budget friendly items, using easy to find items from Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby and Michaels, usually with a coupon or when they are on sale. So if you are new to my channel, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. And maybe you've been around for a little while and have not hit that subscribe button. I hope you'll go ahead and do that today. I am committed to bringing you videos as often as I possibly can, usually twice a week. So I hope you enjoy these three home decor DIYs I have for you today. I feel like I've kind of graduated to slightly bigger items. Usually what I make will fit on a small little craft table. Well today the three items I made are a little bit bigger, but they are still using items that are easy to find. So I really hope you enjoy these farmhouse, everyday farmhouse home decor DIYs. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you would like to see more everyday farmhouse decor. And with all that being said, let's get into the video. So for our first project today, I am making a farmhouse ladder. I've been seeing these all over Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram. So I decided to give it a try myself. I will link the YouTube channel in the description box below that I feel like I most patterned mine after. So to make the ladder, I'm going to use four packs of the five gallon paint sticks, two packs of the smaller ones, and some zip ties, some wire baskets from Dollar Tree. So this is how I'm laying out the wood paint sticks. Wherever you see a red circle, that is three or one whole pack of five gallon paint sticks glued together. And then wherever you see a purple circle is five one gallon paint sticks glued together. So this project uses four packs of the larger ones and two packs of the smaller ones. So after getting those all glued together, I'm laying them out like this and then I'm going to use wood glue to glue the ladder together like this. Once it is glued together, I am going to paint it with my dark brown chalk paint called Truffle. And here you'll see what it looks like when it is painted. 
I really wanted that dark stain look, but I only wanted to just paint it, not have to rub the stain away. So I got four of these gold wire baskets from Dollar Tree and I'm going to spray them black just to blend more with the farmhouse look that I'm going for. So I sprayed them once right side up and once upside down until they were nice and covered. So here I'm going to use these nylon zip ties. They're black from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use three zip ties to attach each basket to one of the rungs of my ladder. I, I could have used probably two more hands to do this gracefully while filming. But um, if you haven't used zip ties before, they are pretty awesome. I mean, they are very secure and you're not having to try to use glue or anything like that. So three zip ties on each basket. I have four crossbars of my ladder and four of the baskets. Here I flipped my ladder around and I wanted to show you where I added some extra pieces of wood to make my ladder more secure. So on either long side, I glued another five gallon paint stick on the back where the two came together. And then where each of my crossbars um, attaches to the side pieces, I put a little like three inch piece of a paint stick just to keep it more secure. And there I was just showing you how with the zip ties, the baskets can flip and you could store this fairly flat. So for inside my baskets, I'm not going to put anything very heavy because, you know, it's a DIY, but it is very sturdy. Um, so for inside my baskets, I'm taking this burlap coffee sack that I got... Gosh, I think I got it in a coffee shop in Nashville a few years ago. But anyway, I'm just cutting it open and then I'm going to cut the large piece into four smaller rectangles that I will then um, use inside my baskets so that it will kind of hide um, what's inside the basket except for what you see on the top. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So just you can use any type of material that you might have on hand. You could use the wide um, burlap ribbon that you can get at Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Just whatever kind of fits the time of year and the type of decor that you're trying to go for. So um, not a professional by any means, but I just kind of put the piece of burlap in and I'm kind of folding the ends towards the outside um, to make it fit as much as possible. And then I have two of these small pieces of floral foam. You can see they already have holes because I'm reusing stuff that I have on hand. And I'm going to do this to all four of my baskets. Next to hide the floral foam, I'm using some of this grass. And then I didn't think you needed to watch me putting the florals in, but I just cut little stems from Dollar Tree lavender, variety of colors, and stuck them in the floral foam. And I have my little ladder on a little table on the front of my porch. And I just love how versatile this project is. My next project is using one of these 8x8 eight eight signs from Dollar Tree, some tumbling tower blocks, an embroidery hoop, bamboo skewers, a glass candle dish, and a glass vase. So I just showed you real quick, I had one of these signs that I had already painted uh, light gray or mineral chalk paint, and I ended up not using it. So I'm gonna make, this is going to be the base of my project. I am making a lantern. This is another thing I've been wanting to make for a long time, but I wanted it to be reproducible. So I'm taking my tumbling tower blocks and for each corner, I need 10. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue pairs of blocks together. You see I'm doing that here. And I'm going to do this five times using 10 Jenga blocks. Then I'm going to take my five pairs and I'm going to glue them together in a column. And this will be my corner uh, piece for my lantern. So 10 Jenga blocks, pair them up, glue them end to end. As you see, I'm laying them out here. I'm gonna glue those together end to end. And I'm really trying to make sure I'm keeping everything as even and as straight as possible. So that's what I'm gonna do in each of my four corners. So just for those four corner pieces, you need 40 Jenga blocks. But that's not all because I'm gonna show you where else we're going to use more of our tumbling tower blocks. Once I have my four sets of 10, I'm now going to make four sets of eight. I'm just making these two blocks shorter. Okay, so I'm still gonna pair up two blocks and do that four times and then glue them end to end. And I'm going to do that four times. Okay, so you can see it's just one length shorter than the four I made for the corners. And I'm gonna glue these four pairs of blocks together, just like this. You see I'm using the ruler to try and keep everything straight and do that four times. So on the left, you see I have four sets of eight and on the right, four sets of 10. Now, I could have done this with regular sandpaper, but I happened to have my little hand sander nearby and I just gave them a quick little run on each side just to get the hot glue. This is some super glue from Dollar Tree. It is very sticky, so be super, super careful when you use this. I decided to put a little in each corner and then some hot glue on the end of my blocks. I'm getting that as evenly as I can in the corner of my sign. And I'm gonna do this for all four of my corners. So here's what it looks like with those four corner pieces in place. I decided to keep those the natural color, but for these four pieces, I'm bringing in the mineral light gray from the bottom of my piece, and I'm going to paint these four with that same light gray color. So these four pieces are going to make the top frame of my lantern. So again, using super glue and hot glue, I'm going to put these across two sides, two of my corner pieces. Then I'm going to turn it and put more super glue and more hot glue and then do my other two gray pieces on top of the two that I just put down. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. It's almost like building with Lincoln Logs a little bit, but instead we're using the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. Now that the frame is built, I'm going to take some of my bamboo skewers and trim them just enough so that I can hot glue them in an X on all four sides of my lantern. And in case you're wondering, these two skewers are not touching each other. I have the one going from bottom left to top right is kind of on the inside edge of the corner 
I'm going to call them corner towers. And then the other one going from top left to right is more on the outside. So there is a little bit of space between the skewers. Here you'll see I have one side open. I do eventually put the skewers there as well. So I decided I didn't want my lantern just to be square on the top. So I thought about taking this embroidery hoop. This is actually the inside circle that does not have the bracket on it. And I cut it in half with my hand saw. And here you see I'm just gluing it from one corner to the opposite corner with a little bit of hot glue. And then the second piece I did make just a tiny bit longer because it is going up and over the other piece. So a little dot of hot glue where they cross and then one under each end of that second piece. And I just thought this was kind of fun, gave it a slightly different shape and uh, definitely some more height while using something that's pretty easy to find. I find these at thrift stores all the time. And then just putting one of these round wood beads on the very top. I decided I wanted a little more texture and color on the inside of my lantern. So I'm taking these, gosh, what would it be? 27, three times nine, yep, of the brown blocks because the only tumbling tower blocks I had were the ones that have two colors. So I'm taking threes and gluing them side by side. And then I guess you'd say I'm kind of gluing them like a trivet where I have, or like brickwork, I don't know. You've got three going up and down, three going side to side or horizontal, whoops, and then three more next to it going vertical. So I'm gonna do this in my three rows and then I will glue those three rows of nine together to make a square. And I wanted this to put inside um, on the bottom of my lantern for just an extra layer of protection where the glass candle holder will sit. So here I'm just putting that inside. It fits pretty nicely there on the bottom, right in the middle of the lantern, and then the round glass on top, and then whatever glass vase you have. I did feel like this round glass candle plate was a little too plain, so of course I pulled out some of my nautical rope and just hot gluing a little bit at a time. I decided to go around the inside one time, and then I do end up up going um, kind of on the lip of the candle dish as well. You'll see when it's all done that I've gone around twice with my nautical rope just to add that a little bit more of that farmhouse look to my project. And here it is. I do end up changing out that glass uh, vase inside for something a little bit taller, but you could definitely um, change this out for the seasons. You could add greenery or Christmas lights depending on the time of year. I really love how it turned out. For my third project, I am making my version, my dupe of a balance scale that I saw at Kirkland. I'm using two of these lobby uh, brooms, one of those eight by eight signs, a plastic bowl, two plant hanging devices, and a few other things we'll see here in a second. So I was gonna, again, use that big eight by eight sign, but I found this one and thought it was better size and it just fit my bowl pretty nicely. So using a combination of E6000 that I'm dotting around the edge, and then I'm going to do some hot glue in between. I'm going to attach this bowl to my sign. This is going to make the base of my balance scale. 
So like I said, I have two of these, I think they're called like lobby brooms or something like that. The handle is fairly long and it unscrews like you see here from the base. And then there's like a little handle on the other end. So I am using two of these and one here I'm going to hot glue to the center of my bowl. This is going to be the stand. And then here's the other one from the other lobby broom. You see that handle with the, the hole on the left. I took that same piece from the other broom handle and put it on the other side. So you'll see a little bit later, both of the left and right sides of my scale have that handle with the little hole. Now I wasn't going to just trust hot glue to hold this thing together. So once that was dry, I am taking some of my jute twine and kind of like I did when I made my Easter crosses, I'm going to loop it around and, and pull it, you know, fairly tight so that it will um, hold these two plastic pieces together. Just doing a crisscross and then going back the other way and then I will hot glue it to attach it. My original plan was to poke a hole and like use a, a screw or a nail but the plastic on these two handles is really strong like I was having a hard time poking a hole. So this was my plan B but I just think it turned out just fine. So hot gluing the end here of my jute twine just to make sure my two pieces stay together and stay perpendicular. Here I'm showing you the piece that I sawed off. This was the part that screwed into the dustpan. I'm going to take another one of these wood beads and hot glue it to the top here just to be like a little finial um, finished decoration on the top of my scale. I'm also going to add some stability where the handle meets the bowl because it is just hot glued. I'm going to go around this three times with my nautical rope and that basically fills that little bottom area of my bowl. Once I have my scale put together, I'm taking it out and spraying it with some flat black spray paint just so the entire thing is uniform in color. So now let's move on to the two hanging scales, even though they're not really going to be scales. I'm using the bottom piece of these two um, pots from Dollar Tree and then I'm using two of these six their little plastic starter pots I wanted something that was lightweight so it wasn't going to put too much pressure on my scale and then I'm using two of my plant hangers um, with these chains from Dollar Tree. You've seen me use these before. I really love these. Um, I love that you can take some of the links off to make them a little shorter. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use my pliers and I'm gonna count up from the hook about five links and open that link and remove four links from my chain just to make it a little bit shorter um, so that these weren't hanging all the way at the bottom of the scale. And then you just put the hook on that one that you opened. And here I'll show you a little bit better. I'm opening it up, taking the bottom ones off, removing the hook and attaching it to the one I opened and squeezing it shut again. So I'm going to do this to both of my plant hangers, to all three chains on each one and then they will be the right length that I want them for my scale. Now to punch my holes in my little plastic discs, I'm using a crocodile. This plastic though is very thin, so I'm pretty sure you could probably just use a regular hole punch, but I'm going to punch three holes, kind of like I did with my succulent hanging um, 
piece that I made a few videos ago. And then I'm just going to put the hook through each hole and I will do this two times, one for each side of my scale. I decided to farmhouse up these plastic pots and so I'm just taking my watered down white chalk paint and just giving them kind of that whitewash look. And I'm gonna do this to both of the little pots. Once my pots are dry, I'm going to cut, this is a floral foam brick from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use one fourth of the block for each of my pots. Um, I did need to kind of cut each of the corners to make it a little more rounded so that it would fit in my starter pots here. I also used some of that same floral grass that I used in my ladder, my first project. And then I'm just taking, again, I'm trying to use up a lot of what I have on hand. And I had some of these uh, greenery that I had purchased at Dollar General. So I'm just going to cut little branches of them off and fill these two pots for my scale. Okay, so here you can see the scale with both of my planter chains hanging, and then I'm just going to add my two little white pots with my greenery that I just cut. And, you know, I feel like there's one more thing. I feel like right where that middle is a little bare. So I found this in my stash. This was from a Valentine's sign. Um, it had, I think, like the fake burlap on it. It said, Happy Valentine's Day. But I liked the shape of it, so I'm going to paint this front, back, and sides with my ink chalk paint. And then with some white sticker letters, I'm going to just put the word welcome on there. You see my technique here, I lined them up on a ruler, just barely at the bottom, and then I can place them and they're nice and centered and in a straight line. Then we'll just attach a jute string to the back and we can hang this from the top of our scale. This is another thing that could be changed out, kind of like the lantern and the ladder. You could change out the sign that hangs on the center of the scale and also whatever is balancing on the scale. I just love how this turned out much better than I even thought it would. I'd love to know what you guys think of this and the other two projects. I thank you again for joining me today on my channel and for all your wonderful comments. Again, remember to tell me what you're doing to stay active and safe. And also, you know, I love to hear which of these projects you liked the best. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.